Hey friends, welcome back to another Monday morning watercolor tips video. My name is Emma Fave, and here on this channel on Monday mornings, I give you watercolor tips to start you off for the week. So today we're going to be talking about shading and how to make our paintings look a little bit more 3D. So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so today we are talking about shading and I'm going to do an example of a Christmas ornament um, to help us with this technique. So when you are doing some shading or creating a shadow to make something look a bit more 3D, especially like a sphere shape, like an ornament, um, you want to make sure you're adding shadows in the right places. So what I want you to think of is find your light source, make up your light source, wherever it's coming from. So I am going to just gently draw a ball, <laughs> gently draw a ball, lightly draw a ball the best I can. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And I'm going to draw another one here. Okay, and then I am going to erase just so I can get a light outline. I have an idea. And we want to pick where our light source is going to come from. And that will depend on where we put our shadows. So, for this, I'm going to say there's going to be a light source coming from here. I know you can hardly see the balls, but we're going to have like a light source coming from here, which means it is going to touch this part of the balls. I keep saying balls, the bulbs or the Christmas ornaments, and it's going to create a highlight in this area and shadow on this area. Wherever the light would be touching first is going to be the, the lightest part of your object. And then wherever it would be kind of like hidden would be the darkest um, area of your object. So this really helps with making things look a little less flat and a bit more 3D. So I'm going to start with um, a red Christmas bulb. Okay, and I'm going to do just a light wash of this red. So light wash meaning that I have more water than pigment on my brush. Okay, so I'm starting off with this light wash and then I can gradually start adding in the darker shadows. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back into my red and I'm gonna start adding, remember our light source is coming here so it would hit right about there. <laughs> I, I tapped it, but it's fine. And we're gonna start making it a little bit brighter of a red on this side. I'm going to take that red that I tapped there, kind of bring it around on this side. We can even do a little bit over here, just a little bit more, so you have that highlighted area. Okay, and I'm going to take off some of the pigment just by drying it on my paper towel there. And we're just going to blend it out a bit. And then we have a medium wash. Now I'm going to go back in with another round. Okay, and I'm just going to start blending it to make it darker on this side. Okay, so you can kind of see that there's quite the line here, right? Even though we're doing wet on wet and you would think that it would be a bit more um, softer, we are gonna have to blend it out. So I'm just gonna place it where I want to. And then again, dry it off of my paper towel and then just kind of blend that line. Again, lifting some of that color and just blend it out. Okay, see how we have that that shape or that highlight there? Okay, now we want to actually add some shadow. So when I'm doing a shadow color, you can darken your colors with black, but what I like to do is I like to darken it with um, its contrasting colors. So if you look at the color wheel, which is on my wall here, contrasting colors are the colors that sit directly across from each other. So reds, contrasting color would be green. So if you wanted to make a darker red that you don't have in your palette, let's say, I'm gonna add a red there, I would grab a green color. So I'm just gonna grab some hookers green and I'm gonna add it to my red and it automatically makes a darker red, making it a bit more of a shadow color. And if it's too brown, you can just add a bit more red and then we're just gonna add it to our side that would get less light. I'm trying to make it <laughs> as smooth and as round as possible. 
I feel like the older I get, the shakier I get for sure. Okay. I'm just going to add a bit more red to it. Just make it a little bit more of a vibrant, darker red. You just need a tad bit of that color. And then I'm going to try and blend it out a bit better because I feel like I added too much water to this darker color. So it's going to dry a lot slower than that. And then you're going to get that kind of weird um, blue mark. So I'm just going to wash off my brush and I'm going to dry it. And then I'm just going to start blending it together. Dry it. Blend. Dry it. Just because I want it the, all the same amount of wetness. So it all dries at the same rate. And if you really wanted to, you could add a little bit of black. Oh, that's not my black. That's my black. It kind of does the same thing. And just really tap in a little bit more of the darkness on that side. Okay. And it just makes it look a bit more 3D and actually round, like it's popping off the page. Okay, let's do another one. So I'm going to pick... Let's do a green bulb because, you know, Christmas colors. So I'm going to take a medium wash of this Hooker's Green. And I'm going to go over the full thing. And remember, if you're doing two objects and you're creating shadows on them, make them make sense with your light source. So again, if we chose our light source um, coming from here, this one's going to have the same light source or the same kind of shadow pattern. Might hit it a little bit different, like this is going to hit it here and this might hit it there. But they're still going to have the shadows on the same side. Okay, so now I'm going to take some darker green and I'm going to start doing my medium wash. And the trick is to not have too much water on your brush when you're adding these darker colors because then it will push the pigment away. Um, you want to just really start grabbing more pigment than water on your brush. Still having your brush wet, obviously, but not too, too wet where it's going to drip when you add the darker color. I feel like I want a, a nice darker green, though. A nicer green for this. It's a little bit too bright for my liking, but that's okay. Okay, and see how we have the highlight there? It's got to make sense. I'm going to wash off my brush, dry it, and I'm just going to kind of blend out. The highlight. Okay, and now we're going to create our darker green just by adding a little bit of its contrasting color, which is red. So we can grab this red bring it over here a bit more see that green and we're gonna start adding it to our shadow side Okay, so again, to make sure it doesn't pool and, you know, dry unevenly, I'm just going to dry off my brush on my paper towel and just kind of blend it out. Just move it around. Like so. I'm going to grab, you can grab a little black if you'd like. Just tap it. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to quickly show you what these are going to look like when they are dry, but that's about it. So if you feel like you need a little bit more depth, you can always add another layer just to intensify the shadows and stuff. But that is how I add shadows to make my objects look a little bit more 3D. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.